Hello, this is CleanTech Business Club uh, in partnership with Fuel Electric and we are discussing about the transformation of the world with Euro Electric at their awards winning power summit. And, uh, now we speak with Al Karim Jowenji, Director for Public Affairs uh, at uh, DNV here in Europe. Yes, so I think he's a very relevant person. So just very shortly, uh, Al Karim, could you tell me more about uh, DNV and what is your expertise actually in the energy sector? Sure. So DNV is a global consultancy. It's about 12,000 people globally. Um, and we work across the energy transition and our mission really is to do two things. One is to drive the scale up of renewables and other technologies such as hydrogen and storage. Uh, and the second thing is really to decarbonize the oil and gas sector. And both of those things are really important. And ultimately, of course, our mission is to reduce GHG. Can I argue with you from the beginning? Of course. So, uh, because a lot of people, they speak about energy transition, but actually we think in the CleanTech Business Club that it's not going to be transition, it will be transformation. Yeah. I think that's a fair summary of things, because now we're at a point where things are so urgent that we need to be much more transformative and, and make impact much faster than we've ever made before. And so I would agree with you that it is more of a transformation than a transition. I think oh, that's so it's so it. nice to argue with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Al Karim, I would like to ask you. So, um, I'm sure you notice with your colleagues uh, on a global level. Yes, I would say now even on the multinational level that we are um, transforming from the uh, more globalized uh, world into multinational world, yes, or multi-continental world. And how do you think it will impact uh, the transformation process? It's very interesting, actually. DNV, um, last year, just before the COP, published a study called the Pathways to Net Zero Emissions. Mm -hmm. uh, and what this does is look at 10 different regions around the world uh, and look at the speed with which they need to transform in order for us to be globally at 1.5 degrees. So when you look at that, you see some markets, particularly the EU and North America, needs to move uh, to net zero by 2042. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason they have to do that before 2050 is because other markets are going to progress at a slower pace. So when you look at breaking down the world in that way, there are some markets who are more progressed, have more technology, have more access to finance, who need to move quicker uh, and have already got a bigger install base than others. And so they have to support uh, essentially the other markets that move slower. So I think the idea that everyone moves at the same pace is not correct. We do have to regionalize uh, and in some uh, cases localize uh, the speed with which things transform. And uh, you work, uh, even uh, you look so young, yes, but since quite a lot of years uh, in the industry. And um, if you compare, you know, um, in, the f in the past, the attitude of utilities uh, towards this transformation, mm -hmm. towards uh, transforming into clean energies. And if you compare that with today, what would be the comparison? What would be your uh, feedback? Mm. It's interesting. Um, the uh, CEO of E.ON um, at one speaking arrangement uh, event said that uh, when he was younger, his father, who also worked at a utility, mm -hmm. said to him, enter the utility industry. It doesn't change. It's the same. You will have a job for life. Mm -hmm. And now you speak to him and you see the transformation of the industry, you see how things have to evolve, mm -hmm. things are not quite the same, right? We don't stand still, mm -hmm. the whole market has changed, the business models have to change, the way we operate has to change. So I think you see a big transformation. Now that said, of course, you still see different utilities moving at different places. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to be much more forward looking, we need to be much more aggressive with the ambitions that we have, scale up faster and take bigger risks in some of these things, because if you don't, mm -hmm then the risk of not doing that and making just marginal improvements is not going to be enough for us to achieve 1.5. Because there is also, um, let's say, the, all the play between different countries, but also between different utilities. And those who understand the transformation quicker, they will be the winners, yes? Yes, and I think some of what you're trying to do here is to bring parties together uh, across the value chain, whether it's a utility, whether it's a developer, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's... Uh, all you the know, stakeholders. All the stakeholders, the end users, right, the manufacturers of the, the equipment. They do need to come together and aligned around a single goal. Uh, and that collaboration, I think, now is much more important than it ever was before, mm -hmm. because you also don't want to waste time on the wrong technologies. Well, this is very interesting because actually this is also the point that we discuss in the club, yes? That there is so different, so a lot of different technologies and often, often they are overlapping 
yes, or uh, we are uh, losing efforts, making efforts in the directions which eventually will not be correct, yes. So if we work together, there will be open, yes, to each other, then we can say, okay, this technology can be, for example, for this market, uh, this technology for, uh, suitable for this market, yes? Correct. But uh, I think also that many of these technologies will be relevant in most markets. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, if we start having a discussion around hydrogen for light passenger vehicles, that debate has already happened, right? We're already moving towards electric vehicles. There's no mm -hmm. point thinking about debating hydrogen for light vehicles because, you know, the whole industry has moved to EVs and there's market acceptance of that, there's end user acceptance, so let's go with that and work around that model and, and make that happen faster, mm -hmm. right? So for other technologies, maybe there is not as much certainty. Hydrogen is a good example, you know, how much of it do you, do you generally use? How much do we need? Um, but it will still be a relatively small component of the end, right? So electrification, of course, is the way that most people would say we need to go for, for most things, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, home heating or cars or, you know, other light industries. So we need to be aligned around these things and invest the money in the right things that will have the biggest carbon impact. If you, in a couple of valid points, uh, said what are the game changers, yes, mm -hmm. during this uh, electric or clean tech decade? Well, policy is definitely one. Right, and uh, I think what we've seen from the EU in terms of the Fit for 55, the Repower EU package that came out just two weeks ago, uh, I think a great steps forward to create uh, a policy landscape and, a, and an ambition that's aggressive. Mm -hmm. And it may be very aggressive, the market doesn't think it's possible, but unless we try and achieve that, we will not hit 1.5. And of course, then the consequence of not achieving 1.5 is a much bigger penalty for us in terms of the impact on, of climate on our lives. So I think that's a big game, game changer. Um, I think the speed of technology and evolution has been very really good and maybe still underestimated in terms of what's possible from now until 2050. So I think we should not be too negative and be a bit optimistic in, in terms of how quickly some of these technologies can be deployed. The one in negative area maybe is around scale, right? How fast can we deploy? And do we have all the pieces in place from permitting uh, to uh, supply chains, which we know are a problem? Uh, those sorts of things can cause hiccups in terms of what we deliver from now to 2030 and then to 2050. So what are the solutions? Well, we need um, supply chain issues right now is a problematic globally because of the war, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are difficult to solve, but we need, again, much more alignment around the supply chain, commonality of thinking, working together, looking at diversifying like, supply mm -hmm. um, away. And, you know, Europe has now started to, to, to look at solar production. Mm -hmm. US is also started to look at solar production mm -hmm. to diversify away. So we also look, uh, have to look at diversification strategy in terms of where we produce what. We are arriving to the point uh, which is our club spirit. Together we are stronger. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think this is, this is why these sorts of events, you know, bring people together, your electric here, um, and align people around some of these topics. And I think we make progress that much faster. And we also need the policy makers to come along with us. Industry, utilities, all the stakeholders. All stakeholders, including the public as well. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, last question, actually, uh, because you know, uh, we discussed about the power of DNA, yes, and human to human relationship. And how important this relationship is in your work? Well, my CEO, we had a series of meetings over the last couple of days, you know, here at the Commission, with customers, mm -hmm. uh, with some of the sector associations. And the one thing he always says is uh, people buy from people. Right, so it's a very much a relationship business. It's not two companies buying or working together, it's people working together. So that human interaction, the commonality of DNA, as you say, uh, it's a nice phrase, um, I think is critical to make this transition happen. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Al-Karim. Uh, I didn't mention, but in our club, unfortunately, uh, we have some flagship sign, which is thumbs up. <laughs> uh, we need to make it the last one. Thumbs up for the utilities, for clean tech, and for the world's transformation into a positive direction. Thanks Fantastic. so much.